The Israelis give land, the Palestinians give peace. The biggest obstacle to peace has been sheer opposition to it by both some Arabs and some Israelis. He was a, a huge icon for the Palestinian people. Um, there's no doubt about that at all. And whatever differences we had with them, I think it's right to recognize that. Um, I think the most important thing is to make sure that we reinvigorate the peace process. Which Yasser Arafat will you remember, statesman or terrorist? That debate, like most in the Middle East, is likely to continue for decades to come. And to make sense of it all, we've invited our friend, the brilliant writer, world traveler, and feared iconoclast Christopher Hitchens, whose new collection of essays is called Love, Poverty, and War. Christopher, I am more confused than ever about the distinction between terrorist and statesman. So Yasser Arafat dies this week after decades of sponsoring terrorism, and the Vatican, of all places, issues a statement essentially praising him as a statesman and expressing pain at his passing. Which was he, terrorist or statesman? Well, his achievement is if we're going to be generous for a second to the departed, is that is a cosmological one, I would say. Until, at any rate, the 67 war, and maybe sometime afterwards, people thought of it as Israel versus the Arabs. In other words, there's this tiny Jewish state, and then there's this huge sea of Arabs and Muslims around it, and everyone's feeling of natural identification with the underdog kicks in. After the work of Arafat internationally, it more and more became obvious that it was Israel versus the Palestinians. In other words, it was two quite small peoples in this quite small land who had to find a way of sharing it one way or another. And he did, he did shift the dialogue. It became Israel versus the Palestinians. But he did it at a huge price. I mean, the first of which was to identify the cause of Palestine with someone swarthy, unshaven, unscrupulous, who toted a rod on the podium of the United Nations. Murderous, too. Uh, there, but while talking about olive branches, and never could seem to make up his mind. As for terrorism, look, I mean, the uh, fact is that international law guarantees people the right to resist if they are under, uh, under occupation. They, that, it doesn't mean they aren't entitled to do anything. Right. There are certain things that are crimes by any definition. Like kill Olympic athletes. But that's why people, yeah. that's why people sometimes hesitate to use the word terrorist flat out or use it on... on but post 9-11, I mean, aren't we in an age where we have to draw clear distinctions between legitimate political resistance and terrorism? Well, that's why I think um, the chairman's first act, Chairman Arafat's first act, widely photographed, you may remember it, was to be photographed giving blood for the victims of 9-11. He wanted as clearly as he could to try and take advantage of that distinction. But he could never do it convincingly. By the way, I don't know who got that blood, but I, I hope they threw it away. <laughs> well, I don't... Yeah. Excellent point. Uh, there's this sort of weird contradiction in the way people seem to be remembering him, at least the, 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 the first editions of his obituary seem to say this, that you know, he, he was this you know, great man, leader of his people, repository of the hopes and aspirations of, of the Palestinians, and yet only now that he's dead do the Palestinians possibly have a hope of actually getting a state. His corruption, for example, was quite extraordinary, and a, a lot of the row that there will be among the Palestinians now is what, what happened to all this money? Did it go into his personal bank account? Almost certainly it did. He set up about three extra militias to try and control the Palestinians on top of the existing occupation. I mean, he, he, he made Gaza into more of a police state prison than it was already. Um, of the Arab leaders, his closest relationship was probably with Saddam Hussein in the, in the last few years. Um, he was, he, identi he self-identified with with dictators. He was a dictator before he had a state to rule over. Um, the, these are all terrible things to be saying about, about a dead guy, but they're all true. And uh, all the Palestinians basically know this, but they don't like to denounce the chairman or see him denounced by others. Now, Ar okay. Arafat died in France, where he was probably more popular than he was in, say, Egypt. Indeed. Arafat was genuinely popular in France because he was seen as a, this indigenous leader, this revolutionary leader, spokesman for his people. And yet the, the French, amazingly, uh, from my point of view, this week essentially invaded the Ivory Coast, blew up the Ivory Coast Air Force, I think both planes, yeah. uh, in defense or in response to this attack on, uh, I think, eight or nine legionnaires. Isn't, I mean, is this hypocritical? France reserves the right to invade other countries when it wants to, but denounces other nations when they do that? What's the, what's the standard? It's such a, such a wonderful target, uh, but there's the, some, you know, Someone has to do it. Um, French unilateralism is a, has always been a huge factor on its own. They claim the right to explode nuclear weapons for testing in the atmosphere in French Polynesia, which is one of their rundown colonies in the Pacific, um, not caring about 
the fallout, and they claimed the right to murder the crew of the Greenpeace vessel, the Rainbow Warrior, which went to protest about this. They blew up that ship, killing one of its crew in the, um, in the harbor of New Zealand, which is you know, respectable democracy. Um, in Africa, the, they have what they call la francophonie, in other words, the, the former French colonies of Africa who have their own economies still tied to France, and we, where France intervenes at will militarily. They intervened militarily in Rwanda to try and keep going the government, the genocide government that they'd, they had installed there. Um, they go into Ivory Coast without so much as a buy or leave. I've, I've been in Cote d'Ivoire. You, you have to spend a lot of time there proving to people that you're not French. <laughs> which is actually, with my French, it's fairly easy to do. <laughs> no. But they, they, they look at you and they want to be sure you're not French. The uh, same in, in Congo, by the way. Um, it's the last really uh, aggressively colonial European power. And <laughs> it doesn't ever, it, though it is a member of the Permanent Five of the um, UN Security Council, it never seeks UN permission for any of its interests. Well, and they didn't even seek parliamentary p uh, permission no. for this move. Now, the Ivory no, and, Coast... And, and if a leader of any of these countries is elected who they don't like, they usually have him assassinated. It's been, there used to be a man, Michel Foucault was his name, whose who's cabinet-level job it was to, it, to do coups and assassinations in, in French Africa. Christopher Hitchens, thank you. Sure.